Hey gang, this is Mike with my Real Estate Dojo. In this episode, I want to talk to you guys about how I came to America and why did I come to America, guys, okay? Um, first of all, I'm from Iran. I was born in Iran. I'm a refugee to America. And what that means is that in Iran, um, majority of the people there are Muslim. And if you're non-Muslim, like what my parents are, they're Baha'i. I'm not Baha'i. I don't have any religion. I just believe in love. Um, if they were Baha'is and in Iran, if you were a Baha'i, the government would torture you, kill you, you know, you, you didn't have rights, dude. Like, you couldn't own property, you couldn't go to school. I mean, if your neighbors knew that you're not Muslim, I mean, you're not Muslim, they would beat you, they would just harass you, dude. And so that's why I'm a refugee to America. And the, and the way I came to America wasn't like I just got into an airplane with my family and we just got up and left. No, it was totally different than that. It was like we had to skate for our life, dude. I mean, it's hard for me to explain this, that we had to skate for our lives. And the way we left Iran was right around like, I would say, 1, 2 in the morning. I was a very small kid. Uh, and we didn't tell anybody we were leaving, you know. I didn't even know we were leaving to my mom. So they were leaving. It was two in the morning when they woke me up. Okay, um, not your friends, not your family, not your neighbors, no one, dude. Because you were scared for your life that somebody's gonna rat you out to the government and they're gonna come and kill you and torture you. Okay. And so the way we, we I came to America was like I was in Iran. It's like one or two in the morning. Parents just woke woke us up, say, "Hey, we're leaving," you know, and that's all it was. They used to call it hard edge. Which basically means it didn't say we're coming to America because if you said that, you know, they kill you in Iran. You know what I'm saying? So we say hard edge. That means we're exiting. You know, you so, so uh, anyway, so people that are Iranian, they understand what I'm saying with that. Uh, anyways, so the way it happened is we woke up really late at night. My parents uh, had, my dad actually had hired these coyotes, man, believe it or not people that would sneak us across the border because the way we came to America is we had to go to Pakistan we had to live there for like almost two years and then from there we had to go to Spain and live there for almost like a year and a half and then finally be able to come to America guys it wasn't like I just got into an airplane and just, we just came here okay or I just got in a car and we just drew here okay or got in the ship and came no I am a refugee dude my parents are fucking refugees you know you know what I mean uh, and the way it happened is this was so mind-boggling it's hard to explain this uh, is that my parents woke me up they had hired these coyotes man to sneak us across the border from Iran to Pakistan and I just remember being in this l fucking little fucking Jeep or van I don't remember I was such a little kid and there was like at least eight or nine other families with us uh, people I should say and it was just like me my dad my mom and my brother and we we're all crunched up in this one fucking small cargo I don't know it's van or Jeep cargo whatever it was and I remember the fucking driver and, and the passenger that had guns and man I, I was just a kid I was scared dude and, and I remember in, in parts of the fucking roads that we were going to it was like off roads in the fucking mountains dude and like, zip, zip, zip. I mean when you're going you're just like boom, boom. And I remember my mom keep hitting her head on top of the ceiling and my dad and you know and I was sitting on my mom's lap and my brother sitting on my mom and it was just like so fucking crazy dude uh, and I remember those fucking drivers the, the coyotes would tell us shut up be quiet and they would have to turn off the fucking lights dude because when they were traveling in these fucking mountains these cliffs they couldn't even turn their fucking lights on because the government would spot us dude and if they would spot us they would just kill us right there they would kill Everybody in that car, the coyotes, the kids, the moms, the dads, everybody, man. I mean, they would just shoot you right there. They wouldn't even take you to jail or nothing, dude, you know? So I, I, I remember fucking my mom putting our hand, my hand on my fucking mouth, dude. I couldn't even fucking breathe, dude. I had to breathe in my nose. I was just a fucking little kid because we couldn't say shit, and I was scared, and I was wanting to cry. And same thing with my little brother. Uh, I remember fucking the balancing and the balancing in these cars for hours and hours and hours and hours man it felt like an eternity dude I, I i remember how scared everyone in the fucking vehicle was my dad my mom all these grown people in the car man they were so fucking scared they were just like 
You couldn't hear a fucking word in this van, dude. You have all these people in here, but not one word. Everybody was afraid of their fucking life, man. Man, the kind of shit I've had to go through to come to America, man. When I think about it, I'm like, man, I, I am one lucky dude because even though it's so much drama, so much craziness, man, I'm a lucky dude to be able to come here. There's millions of people all over the world that want to come here, man. They have the government's killing them for whatever reason. It might be religious, it might be civil war, whatever, dude, or they live in poverty. My family and I didn't come to America for economics. We just came here for our dear life, dude. If we stayed back at home, they would have killed us, dude. I mean, we couldn't even go to school. We couldn't even work. The government, the neighbors have threatened my dad multiple times. They're going to kill him if he didn't convert, you know, just to Muslim and all kinds of crazy shit, man. Um, so anyways, man, after driving forever in this fucking dark van with, without them having lights and the guys having guns and you know being so scared i remember the van pulling over and nobody had any water and this girl in the in the car was dying from dehydration and i was the only one that had a little bottle of water that you know you just sip on as a little kid i remember my mom opening it up and sharing it with this girl and you know and it's this i think believe it saved her life dude you know um this little thing of water i don't even know what you call it man when you have your little kid you know you, you sip on it, it has a little thing on it um, and, and then I remember after we, you know, after that long drive, there was a very long walk in the middle of pitch dark, dude. Like you couldn't even see shit up in the mountains. It was cold. And man, I, I remember walking for such a long time. And then finally we went to this one top of this mountain and there was two more coyotes and they brought us bananas. And this was the very first time in my life I had bananas, dude. I never even seen bananas, dude. I only seen it in cartoons. And that was the first time I ever had bananas. It was in Pakistan because in Iran, uh, I guess there was a car uh, in, um, trading ban or something where American goods and couldn't come to Iran, so we never had bananas. So I had my banana and then Everybody else had some banana, and then they took us to this little fucking building, dude. Um, everybody in this one, this little room, and we stayed there for a couple of nights. And then another vehicle came, and then took us to a different fucking city in Pakistan. Because now we were in the mountains, and fucking God knows where. And they took us to the city, and then from there, we were, we were like, uh, able to go to the government agency, and get residency because we're refugees and we had to stay there for like a two almost two years and then eventually we were able to get on the airplane this time and go to Spain and we had to stay in Spain for a year and a half this whole meantime man you know my parents couldn't work couldn't make any money even though my, my, my mom was a hustler she cut hair and stuff but try to imagine that dude you know you're in a foreign country with no money you don't know how to make money you don't know anybody you don't speak English you just had your life threatened multiple times you had to go through this, all this crazy chaos then you get to Pakistan you don't know nobody you don't know shit you don't know make money you don't fucking nothing dude then you have to go to Spain and the same shit and then finally come to America and you don't have a goddamn nothing dude you have nothing dude it's just your fucking bags you have no connections you don't know left from right you don't know shit dude you don't know what to do you know how do you make it dude you know how do you make it and when I think about my mom and dad and what they've done to themselves and how where they are in life it just scratches my fucking head dude because man they're real soldiers dude they come here they don't speak the language you know my dad starts selling ice cream in old cliff in the shittiest part of town homeboy got robbed multiple times beat up motherfucker didn't give a fuck he got it back up next day went and sold some more fucking ice cream to provide for his kids dude and that's the kind of fucking shit you know i came from dude um so a lot of motherfuckers say, hey, I cuss too much. Maybe it's the harsh I've gone through, dude. I don't know. Uh, but I can tell you this. I didn't have no fucking easy life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I haven't had an easy life when I was a kid. I didn't even have a childhood, dude. Never got to go play with the kids. Never got to go out. We were just traveling, dude. We were always in fucking fear. You know what I'm saying? I, I never got to do any kid shit stuff, dude. Um... But I have no fucking complaints, dude. You know, no matter how hard it was, I am so fucking blessed to be here, dude. I am so blessed to live in America. I am so blessed to have my family. I'm so blessed to have my arms and legs. I have, I'm so fucking blessed to have my heart, my drive. I'm so fucking blessed to have my imagination, dude. And so are you, dude. Because if you live here in America, dude, 
man. There's millions of people that would want to be here, dude. So turn off that fucking TV if you're not happy where you are in life, dude. Turn off that fucking news, dude. Stop listening to that your fucking neighbor that's talking shit and is always bringing you down. Stop listening to that motherfucker that's telling you you can't do some shit. Stop listening to your own fucking mind that tells you you can't do some shit, dude. Your mind is the devil, dude. You know what I'm saying? If you want to meet your soul, if you want to meet your fucking creator, you got to cr shut that fucking mind up, dude. You gotta shut your fucking mind up. The only way to know the fucking creator is to silence, dude. So don't listen to your fucking mind telling you you can't do some shit. Don't listen to your fucking neighbors telling you you can't do some shit. Don't listen to any motherfucker telling you you can't do some shit, dog. You live in America, the best country ever, dude. You can do whatever fuck you wanna do. Yeah, it's gonna be fucking hard. But trust me, dude. You can do it. A dumbass like me, a refugee, didn't speak the language. All this bullshit. If I could turn 100 bucks into multiple businesses, why can't you? And I promise you, you can do it better than I can. I believe in you, and you can do better than I can. You can spell better, you can read better, you have more connections. Dude, you don't have all the trauma that I've gone through. You can do better than I can, I guarantee it, dude. So go out there and hustle and bustle, dude. Don't take no for an answer. Don't fucking settle, dude. You live in the best country ever, dude. The grass is so fucking green, I don't know how to tell you, man. I believe in you, dude. Go chase your fucking dreams. Be your life's purpose on earth, man. Do your soul's work. Fuck the paycheck, man. Fuck that monetary money, that fiat money that, that doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Do your life's purpose. Do your soul's purpose. And the money will come, dude. The money will come. How do I know? I'm a fucking refugee. I can't even speak, dude. I have been traumatized all my life. How the fuck am I driving a hundred thousand dollar car, guys? How the fuck did I start a business with a hundred bucks? I'm not fucking smart. I can't even read or spell, dude. In in high school, I was the lowest of the lowest, dude. In high school, my teachers told me I was a fucking dummy. They tried to put in me in class with dummy people, dude. Just because I couldn't speak English, they tried to put me with retards, dude. When I wasn't a fucking retard. You know what I'm saying? So if I can do it, then goddamn you can do it too. I believe in you, dude. You have more connections. You know more people. You grew up here. And if you didn't, it's okay, dude. You can do it too. I believe in you. Do you go hustle and bustle, dude? Fuck all the naysayers, man. And fuck your own mind that tells you you can't do some shit. Shut that shit off. That's the fucking devil. That ain't your fucking soul, dude. That's not the creator that created the plants and the sun and the, the abundance in this world. Because with that, you don't need no money, you don't need no credit card, you don't need the IQ, you don't need logic. To fucking win, all you need is heart, dude. All you need is fucking will. All you need is fucking imagination. All you need is fucking hard work, dude. And fucking sacrifice. You don't need no material bullshit. You don't need motherfuckers to believe in you. I'm gonna get off this, man. Guys, if you like these videos, please like, please share, please comment. And tell your friends and family about me, man. Thank you.